The short and simple answer to the title question is that cryptocurrency is decentralized digital money. But what does that mean exactly? And how does it work? Allow us to take you through a roller coaster ride, and in the end, you'll understand what cryptocurrencies are and how they operate. Welcome to Moneymaker. Moneymaker is a channel dedicated to helping others become financially independent through cryptocurrency trading and investing. Before we get into the video, don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure that the post notifications are turned on so that you never miss a video from us. Without further ado, let's dive in. Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin in 2008 as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. To put it simply, cryptocurrency is a new type of digital cash. You can digitally transfer traditional, non-cryptocurrency money like the US dollar. But this isn't the same as how cryptocurrencies work. You could be able to use cryptocurrencies to pay for things electronically, just like you can with traditional currencies, once they become more common. Cryptocurrencies, on the other hand, are distinguished by the technology that underpins them. Who cares about the technology underlying my money, you could ask. I'm solely interested in how much money I have in my wallet. The difficulty is that the world's present monetary systems are riddled with flaws. You'll need a payment network with easily understandable account balances and transactions to make digital cash a reality. Because it's not affiliated with the state or government, it lacks a central issuing authority or regulatory organization. Essentially, this means that no one is deciding whether to manufacture new bitcoins, calculating how many to make, tracking their location, or detecting fraud. This is normally handled by a central server that maintains track of all the balances. Because there is no server in a decentralized network, every network entity must perform this function. Every peer in the network needs a complete list of all the transactions to determine whether future transactions are valid or an effort to double spend. But how can these institutions maintain agreement on these records? If the network's peers disagree on a single minor balance, the entire system will fail. They want a complete agreement. Nobody knew how to do it until Sato proved it could be done. Cryptocurrencies play an important role in the solution. We'll use the network's transactions to demonstrate this. Cryptocurrencies can make it easier to move funds between two parties without the use of a trusted third party such as a bank or credit card provider. Instead, these transfers are protected by the use of public and private keys and other incentive systems like proof of work and proof of stake. Bitcoin is a completely digital currency that can be traded between computers on a global peer-to-peer -peer network. Most peer-to-peer -peer networks are built on the concept of sharing such as allowing individuals to make copies of super legal music or movies to download. If Bitcoin is a digital currency, what's stopping you from creating a slew of fakes and amassing vast sums of money? Unlike an MP3 or video file, a Bitcoin is not a string of data that can be copied, for reasons we'll explain in a moment. Bitcoin is an entry on the blockchain, a massive worldwide ledger. Every Bitcoin transaction that has ever taken place is recorded on the blockchain, and as of late 2016, the total amount of data on the ledger was around 107 terabytes. So it's not like you're sending someone a bunch of data when you send them bitcoins. Instead, you're essentially writing the transaction down on that large ledger. Ray sends Clay 5 bitcoins. But wait, you might be thinking, you stated that bitcoin has no central authority to keep track of everything. Although the blockchain is a central record, it is decentralized which means there is no official set of individuals updating the ledger and keeping track of everyone's money as a bank does. Anyone can volunteer to update the blockchain with all new transactions, and a large number of people do. It works because several people keep track of the same thing to ensure that all transactions are correct. As a result, we have blockchain. How are all the ledgers kept in sync if hundreds of people are maintaining the Bitcoin blockchain separately? Consider the entire Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer network as a massive poker table with millions of players. Some volunteers are simply exchanging money, but many others are keeping ledgers. As a result, if you want to pay or receive money, you must inform everyone at the table so that the persons keeping count may update their ledgers. So for every transaction, you're telling the Bitcoin network your account number, the account number of the person to whom you're sending Bitcoins, and the number of Bitcoins you wish to send. Your transaction will be added to the current block by all users who have copies of the blockchain. Having a group of people keep track of transactions appears to be a useful security precaution. However, if all it takes to send bitcoins is a few account numbers, that appears to be a security issue. 
Think of all the ways crooks try to steal other people's credit card information. It's a significant problem with normal money. And with Bitcoin, there's no central bank to notice anything unusual and shut down fraud. Such as if it appeared that you'd suddenly spend all of your life's wealth on beef jerky. So what's stopping Clay from impersonating me and sending all of my Bitcoins to himself? Bitcoins are called a cryptocurrency because encryption keeps them relatively safe. Keys, which are bits of information that can be used to provide mathematical guarantees about messages like, hey, this is truly from me, keep Bitcoin secure. When you create a Bitcoin account, which you may have heard referred to as a wallet, you attach it to two distinct keys, a private key and a public key. In this situation, the private key can take some data and mark it, commonly known as signing it, so that other individuals can subsequently verify those signatures if they like. If the public key works, it means the message was signed with my private key and is what I intended to transmit. Unlike a handwritten signature or a credit card number, this confirmation of identity cannot be faked by a con artist. Each transaction's who portion is crucial in ensuring that the correct people are exchanging bitcoins, but it's also important to consider the when. If I only have enough money to pay Claire or Clay, but try to pay them both, the bitcoin system will generate a check. Both the Bitcoin network and your wallet examine your prior transactions to ensure you have enough Bitcoins to send to begin with. However, another issue could arise due to the timing. Because there are so many copies of the blockchain worldwide, network delays mean that transaction requests may not always arrive in the same order. So now you have a group of people who can choose from various slightly different blocks, none of which are necessarily incorrect. Let's start with Bitcoin. How do you go about resolving that issue? It turns out that the way to do so is to solve problems. Problems with math. Each person keeping a ledger must solve a special kind of math problem provided by a cryptographic hash function to add a block of transactions to the chain. A hash function is an algorithm that takes any size input and converts it to a fixed size output. As an example, suppose your input was this string of numbers, and the hash function in our case says to add all of the integers together. As a result, the output in this situation would be 10. What makes hash functions so useful for cryptography is how simple it is to find the output when given an input. However, determining the original input from output is quite difficult. There are many sequences of integers that add up to 10, even in this very simple example. Only guessing until you get it correct is the only way to find out that the input was 0, 1, 2, 3. The Bitcoin hash algorithm is now known as SHA-256, which stands for Secure Hash Algorithm 256-Bit. It was created by the National Security Agency of the United States. On average, computers built particularly to tackle SHA-256 hash problems take roughly 10 minutes to estimate the solution to each one. That implies they'll make billions upon billions of guesses before getting it correctly. Bitcoin, on the other hand, has a built-in structure to reward them. Each time you win a race to add a block to the blockchain today, 12 and a half new Bitcoins are created out of thin air and added to your account. You may be familiar with the Bitcoin ledger keepers as miners. That's because keeping the blockchain up to date is like throwing a pickaxe at those hash problems in the hopes of striking gold. Bitcoins did not have any perceived worth when they were originally established in 2009. However, as of June 20th, 2021, one Bitcoin is worth US dollars 35,320 cents. As a result, 12 and a half Bitcoins are worth 441,252,050 cents. That's a substantial sum of money. Bitcoin is still a risky and experimental currency. Many people adore it, but others believe it is doomed to fail. We just think it's a cool concept, and it makes us wonder what cryptography will do for us next. And with that, it's time to end the video. We hope this session was informative. Do let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for more content just like this one and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and also press the bell icon to get notified about our new videos. Until then, fellas.